Good morning. It's Wednesday, March 10th. And just a quick follow-up note on the feud between Donald Trump and the Republican National Committees. He has sent a cease and desist order to the National Committees to stop using his image in fundraising campaigns. And they have responded to him. They have told him, that the National Committee has every right to refer to public figures as it engages in First Amendment protected political speech, and it will continue to do so in pursuit of those common goals. That's what their chief counsel wrote to him or said to him. Basically, it's a quick fuck off, Donald. So now I will move on to some other subject. And then we have Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, who should have the world by the proverbials. But they don't. They left England and they're coming to live in the United States. This is a while ago. And there's all kinds of intrigue within the royal family. And apparently Meghan made some statements during an interview with Oprah. And she said she was very upset early on when she was pregnant with their son, Archie. And then somebody in the royal household made a comment that they were disturbed about what the color of Archie's skin might be. Now, I think Queen Elizabeth is a pretty cool lady. And I think if something like that was being said, she would know about it and she would put a stop to it. Even if she agreed with the person, she would never let on. Because the royal family is secretive in their own way. They don't make their personal life public. So Meghan and Harry deserted the royal family by coming to the United States. And I don't think it was really appropriate that Meghan should be interviewed by Oprah and spill the beans, so to speak. I didn't watch the interview, so I don't know what she said. But in reading about it, it seems that the remark about the child's skin color made her cry the week before her wedding. If you put that in perspective, there's tough times all are going on all around the world. Even amongst royalty, there are tough times. And apparently, Megan's friends have said she's kind, strong, and open, and she's not a bully. Many of us who know her feel for her. So if any of you want to watch the interview, it's currently streaming on CBS.com. Now, I have no intention of watching it. It's not my kind of thing. I would rather watch a documentary about World War II. So in any event, that's all I know about Meghan and Harry and the royal family. And I'm sure they'll do fine. Whichever way it goes, they'll do fine. Now, in the sporting world, we have a controversy raging. It's a small raging. It's not a big raging. About the University of Texas's theme song, The Eyes of Texas Are Upon You. Apparently, this song was sung hundreds of years ago. Well, not hundreds of years ago, but a long time ago at minstrel shows where white men were singing this song in blackface. And so because of that, because of that taking place, there are several people who have complained about the song being played before all the football games and all the basketball games and whatever sporting events the University of Texas participates in. I think it's carrying a little bit too far. There's nothing racial within the song itself. It's just the history of who sang it. Well, I can tell you that there's plenty of songs in this country that shouldn't be played because of the person that sang it. There would be no music at all in this country if that was taken seriously. When are people going to give up on this shit? When are they going to spend their time worrying about something that's really important, something concrete, not digging up the fact that somebody 
Maybe even a true racist sang this song a hundred years ago. Is that a reason for nobody else to sing it or listen to it or hear it? I don't think so. I think we're carrying these, some of these things much too far. And then on the other side of the coin, where there's real prejudice running wild, the South Dakota governor says she will sign a bill restricting the rights of transgender girls. Now, a transgender girl is really biologically male. And so in the state of South Dakota, they're taking action because they don't want any physical males competing in girls' sports. Now, on the face of it, I think that's probably fair. But it bothers me that the rights of any children, transgender or otherwise, have bills written against them. And not only does this bill getting written against them, but she is excited to sign this bill. Like this is going to make her a, a wonderful person. It's, it's going to put her at the front of her party or whatever. How can you be excited about something like this? How can you go ahead and do something like this without giving it great thought? She claims it's a very simple bill. It's a bill to protect women's sports. But I don't think it's a simple bill. It's discriminating a group against a group of people, people who are not like other people. Now, maybe there should be another category in sports where these people have a a place to participate, where the transgenders can participate. Let them participate one against the other. Transgender boys against transgender boys and transgender girls against transgender girls. You don't single them out and put them in a category. There are several politicians in South Dakota that came out against the signing of this bill. They said categorically, this is a form of bullying. And others who oppose the bill are saying, it's a waste of time. Don't they have something more important to do? So in my mind, this is a dicey situation. I don't have a real good answer for it. I leave it up to you to think about. And that's all I'll say today. And we'll call today Mishmash Wednesday. So have a great day, and I'll see you in the morning. Bye.